Hello and welcome to Hope City Online. You're about to hear a message that's part of a series. Check it out and consider joining us in person on Sunday. Our vision for you is that you'd have a thriving relationship with Jesus, that you know Him, find community, and discover your purpose as you prioritize your relationship with God. Get in touch with us at hopecity.my slash hello for more details and subscribe to our Hope City KL YouTube and podcast channels so you don't miss any of our future content. Enjoy this message from our co-lead pastor, Emma Burden. It's been a long time, no see to everyone who's watching online. My name is Emma, if we haven't met before, uh, alongside my husband, Joel, we're the lead pastors of Hope City. And so thrilled that you're joining us for our online service today. And if you can, come and check it out in person. Come and be with others, opportunity to worship, pray together, um, get to know one another, have some good coffee. And uh, I think it would do you good if you're able, if you're in the vicinity, then come and check us out next Sunday, every Sunday at 11 a.m. And if you've got children or you've got family that you'd love to bring along with you. We've got a great kids program as well for up to 12 year olds. So come and be a part of the service in PJ. But for everyone else who's watching from near and far, a huge welcome along to this service. And I'm bringing part two of our Easter theme, uh, our Easter series called In Christ. And uh, today I'm really gonna encourage you about having your hope in Christ. And so I don't know what your story is or what you're coming into listening to this uh, with swirling around your mind right now that's maybe concerning your heart, that's heavy on your soul. Well, I'm really believing that breakthrough is gonna come as you hear me speak these scriptures over you. And as God by His Spirit brings revelation to your heart, I'm really believing that things are gonna start to shift and change for you. You're gonna see them from a new perspective and have some great strengths to carry you through. Whatever challenge, whatever uphill, whatever motion of season you're in right now, uh, God has something. He has got a portion for you that is more than enough for what you need. So that's my prayer over you today. But welcome along to the service. Um, My husband and I just got back from sabbatical. We took three months out to be in New Zealand uh, with family and amongst nature and the awesome creation that God has down there. I I very highly recommend adding New Zealand to your bucket list if you've never been before, especially the South Island. Um, But we had a phenomenal time with family, but we're just readjusting to the climate to spice and to all things that are awesome about Malaysia. And so part of our reintroduction, we decided Mondays are gonna be tourist days. So Monday is our day off. And uh, so the first Monday we were back, we took those beam scooters all around the city it was super fun. Although you like this most of the time because the pavements are like a little bit shaky. Um, but this this week we decided to go on the train to Bukit Bintang and uh, just to have a little bit of an explore. There's some new train lines opening, which we realized was later this week, but um, we thought we'd take the train, which is, I'm, I'm happy to report, still very clean, still very cold and still on time. So I love using the train around K- KL, but we went back to Bukit Bintang. I used to work there in our first couple of years and um, following uh, the morning's work, I used to head down for lunch to my favorite Malay couple who cook the most phenomenal Malay fried stingray. So I used to go to the Ikan Bakar shop. And um, anyway, while I was just finishing up, probably about six years ago, I stopped working there. And um, I was pregnant at the time. And my doctor said, you can't have stingray anymore. Too much mercury. Wait till after your pregnancy. And so it must be about six and a half years, maybe since I last had Stingray. And so I was with Joel, we needed to go around to Public Bank to get some cash out. And I said, hey, let's go see if the guy is back. Because when I left there, renovations were happening and he'd had to move on to another store. So I said, let's go see if he's come back. And sadly, I went down this little alleyway and he's no longer where he used to be. And I said, oh, Joel, where am I ever gonna find my kangkung and my chili fried stingray? Where am I gonna get it from? And uh, anyway, I looked around and there's this shop sign and it said, it can back on. I was like, oh, let's try these guys. They might have some. Anyway, I walk up to the shop and lo and behold, it is my friends the best stingray fryers, I'm going to say, in the whole of KL. And I think they're from Sabahan, so maybe it's a different style of chili or something. But they remembered me. And it was this amazing moment, slow-mo of like, what? 
and big hugs all around, big smiles. And they had already started Friday. It's like 10.30 in the morning. We were kind of looking for a coffee or brunch vibe. And instead we had st <laughs> chili fried stingray and Joel had a sea bass and it was awesome. All memories came flooding back to me. And I thought, I love this country so much. It's just the best Monday. But anyway, we left our, our fried chicken place, our fried fish place. And um, it's just behind Public Bank, by the way, and main book at Bintang Street if you're looking for a good fish. But um, we went on down to Pavilion. And at Pavilion, there was a photo wall up and a red carpet. And we realized it was from the exclusive viewing party of the Oscars because everyone's hopes in Malaysia were for Michelle Yeoh to finally win an Oscar and be the first Asian to ever do it. And you'll know now that she did win. But they'd left this photo wall and the red carpet up from the night before. And I was just looking around. And my Instagram was filled with reposts of her Oscar pictures or the champagne carpet pictures. Everyone's so proud and quoting what she'd said in her speech. And it's a bit like when Malaysia wins a medal, the whole country feels like they won a medal. Is it just me, but did you on Monday feel like an Oscar winner? Hit like on this video if you feel like an Oscar winner. Um, but the movie that she, I've got to get this right because it's confusing and I haven't actually seen it. So it's a disclaimer. I don't know what's in the content of the video. Don't vouch for me, but uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. What a movie title. And I watched the trailer and I'm gonna hope that the costume designers and the script writers also got awards because the complexity of what I saw in that trailer is just too much for my small brain to handle. But what an incredible crew that put that movie together. Um, but everything, everywhere, all at once. Isn't that what culture is screaming at us to have? Got to have everything, got to be everything, got to have everything right and perfect and in order. And, and you kind of, there's a lack of satisfaction unless you hit that target that by the way, no one has hit before, but there's this drive in our culture to have it, to be it. Uh, everywhere, everything, or everything everywhere all at once. And uh, I got to reading with, we're going through this series, In Christ. Uh, catch up on Joel's message if you haven't already, but Ephesians is where we're looking at over this next few weeks as we lead to Easter. In Ephesians 1, 15 to 23, it says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks to for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same power as the mighty strength that he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet, he's talking about Jesus, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Let me just suggest to you that the real everything everywhere all at once is our God. Everything good, everything good, everything that you could ever need, wish, hope for, feel that you're gonna need in order to feel that completeness and that fullness in your soul is not found in stuff. It's not found in places. It's not found in hobbies. It's not found in people. It's not found in money. It's not found in a to-do list getting completed. It's not found in the success of your children growing up and becoming astronauts or whatever it is that you would love them to become. Our everything, everywhere, all at once is only found in Christ. All power of heaven is his, all dominion is his, all power was given and authority was given to him. And he is our helper. He is the one that lives inside of us. He's the one that does our every day with us. How incredible is that passage? Read it yourself this week, Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. Just let it simmer, just breathe it in. Just ask God to reveal to you what it is from that scripture that is gonna breed hope. I'm talking about hope today. Uh, our hope is found in Christ, not in the cute girl 
or the cute guy, not in your father's wealth or his lack of. Our hope is not founded on the circumstances of life around us, and we certainly aren't gonna find our hope by watching the news or listening to the office gossip or just kind of following the run of the mill. Hey, hey, sirrah, sirrah, whatever comes will be. Our hope is not in just thinking today will probably be a bit like yesterday, and so I'll just take a deep breath and we'll go for it. God has a rich hope that goes deep into the wells of heaven, into the goodness of God. Our hope can be found there. It's strong, it's secure, it's immovable. The wind can't push it side to side. It's not like in trend with you and then out. It does never cancels you. This hope is steadfast and we need to lean in on it. Our hope is in Christ who by his kindness saved and redeemed you. If you don't know Jesus today, this hope is your portion too. You can call on the name of Jesus and the hopelessness in your life, the void that you've been trying to fill with X, Y, Z, A, B, C to D, everything else in the world has been screaming, this will tick the box. This will make your life feel like it counts. You will not find true satisfaction outside of Jesus Christ himself. And he is here for you. He's available to every one of us. Uh, there is no need to fear what is ahead. And I'm not saying that because once you become a Christian and you say yes to Jesus, life is a field full of roses. I don't think there are fields of roses, but fields full of flowers. It's not that life is plain sailing and super smooth. It's even in the Bible where we are warned that life isn't gonna be simple. But in Christ, it certainly changes. You don't need to fear how you'll raise a family. You don't need to fear how your generation will avoid the debt that's gone in the generations before you. Not because life isn't maybe gonna have complication or challenge to it, not because it's not gonna be frustrating. God has never promised us that life would be an easy ride. But in James, it says, in, um, it says my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. What a ridiculous statement. I don't want a friend that tells me, hey, be happy when trials come. I'm gonna close that conversation off pretty quick. But James is coming with wisdom and he says, brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces something. It produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That in Christ, we can be everything everywhere all at once, but in his perfect design and by his power, not by our own strength. Now, we won't know our perfect selves until we get to heaven and we're, our sanctification knows its fullness and, and we live in this incredible place that God is preparing for us. But by God's presence and power inside of our lives, we are enabled. We come to life, we come to purpose, and we find our hope is strong and sure and unwavering in Christ. There'll be times that are hard to endure, but by His Spirit, we receive all wisdom and revelation to know Jesus better. How cool is that? That we have the Spirit of God to enlighten us, to bring wisdom and knowledge to us, all that we need. And when, when that comes, when we have revelation, which is often found when we spend time in the Word of God, or we spend time in prayer or in worship or in conversation with others who know God and can testify to His goodness, hope starts to rise. Peace enters our heart and hope starts to bubble up. Confidence rises and the assurance of the God who is actually everywhere. He's in everything that we need and, and He is everywhere and present around us. That God, that sure and steady foundation, not finance, not the partner, not the beach holiday, not the perfect work situation or whatever it else that you've currently got your hope on for a certain aspect or maybe all of your life, when it's on God who is omnipresent, omnipowerful, knowing you intimately and your creator, when he is where our hope is placed, then peace, peace comes in and uh, our present help and in time of need we find him, uh, we'll find ourselves with hope in our hearts for the future. Knowing him breeds confidence in us that we are not alone. Maybe you feel like you're on your own in the fight of life. You feel like it's on you to scramble up that career ladder. It's on you to fix the family drama. It's on you to find the money, to get the thing, to make the wife happy or 
to keep the family together or send the kid to the university that they want. Maybe you feel like it's all on you to resolve and to solve. But I'm here today to say, put your hope in Jesus Christ and have him bring all wisdom and knowledge by his spirit into your heart and let your hope be steadfast rather than one that brings doubt or fear or anxiety or sleeplessness. Let him be the one that you put your hope in. Uh, some of us are cowering watching the news. I, I was on sabbatical. I, I am like obsessed by the news generally. I have been for years. It's like my go-to app is a news app. I just love to know like what's going on. I'm intrigued by what's happening in the world. But I had noticed recently that it was having an effect on my emotional state or just uh, consuming my thoughts in the day, like I was analyzing the articles that I'd read or the situations that were going on. I was recounting them to Joel, who is most of the time pretty disinterested. Um, but I realized, hey, you know what is filling my head is this junk, this analysis that's often not founded on anything or it's agenda based or, you know, just things that are like unhealthy that are getting too much screen time over the amazing good news that is out there also that gets no screen time. And so I realized, hey, there's a pretty unhealthy state of affairs going on in my head right now. I need to shift the balance on what my intake is. So over sabbatical, I didn't have much Wi-Fi. New Zealand's not great for Wi-Fi and I hadn't bought a local SIM. And so I had limited time where my phone would actually work to do anything other than spider solitaire. <laughs> um, and so there was a bit of a break, but I want to encourage us that um, for you yourself, your intake in the canteen conversation at lunchtime, or the Facebook news feed and what your algorithm is kind of feeding you on Instagram or whatever it is, uh, the people that are around your life that perhaps don't know this hope in Jesus and are telling you that hoping in this other stuff is going to satisfy or it's going to leave a sense of fullness. It's leaving you feeling empty. It leaves you feeling insecure. It actually feeds the insecurities that are already active inside of you because they speak from a life without God and an experience without God. I want to encourage you to get yourself into the Word of God. Read this passage over and over and understand the power of heaven that wants to come into your life to facilitate that which He's called you to. You'll start to read this. You start to feel full on the inside. You know what? I'm not on my own. The strength of heaven is mine. The riches of heaven are mine. The wisdom and the knowledge, the way through, the strategy, the, the strength that I need to even continue can be found in my relationship with Christ. You start to sit up to the moment. You start to think of the possibilities. You start to allow your faith to, to activate and you start to take steps and they might be baby steps, but you start to feel that fullness come into your heart as you start to move on the promptings of the Spirit. Maybe it's been a while since you've dared to step out in faith. Maybe COVID knocked you so hard. Maybe circumstances in recent years, maybe the loss of a loved one or a breakdown of a relationship or who knows what has robbed you. And just the thought of stepping out again and trusting God with another aspect of your life is too much. But can I encourage you to just give it a go? Even if it's a baby step, could you dare to pray a prayer today and ask God for what it is that you need? Tell him about that thing that's concerning you, that aspect of your life that feels hollow and empty, that thing that's not satisfying you, but is itching you and consuming you, making you feel worthless or inadequate. Could you talk to God about it today? And could you meditate on his word? And could you allow by his spirit strength to come into your soul where it's got weakened, where it's hurting, where it needs some healing from God? And could by his spirit imagine that your life could start to turn around and hope could start to fill you again and the strength would come back for the moves that you need to make in this season? What questions, what things, what moments do you need to have with God over this coming week that you'd start to live in Christ instead of outside of Him? What are you pacif pacifying your fears with in order that you don't get consumed by fear or just call it a day? Maybe there's people watching today, you just have been like, you know what, let's just end this thing. I'm done with trying life out. Maybe like, what's the point of even trying? Like, let's just, whatever happens, happens. I'm just gonna go with the flow. I'm not gonna let things affect me too much. You got cold in your heart. It's like the, it's the opposite. You're, you're, instead of embracing your fears and living by fear, you've decided to pacify them with the noise of maybe music 
or hobbies or times with friends and you're like scared to even be on your own so that your own thoughts won't start to get louder in your head? What are you pacifying those fears or those doubts with in order that the fear won't take over? Maybe your hopes would be fulfilled if you experienced a feeling of satisfaction. Maybe that's where your logic is taking you to. If only you could feel full, feel accomplished, feel surrounded by friends or even lovers. Maybe your hope is in another person that they'll cover your weakness or your lack. You're banking on them to get you through. You're looking for a free ride. Maybe your hope is on being forgotten. That if I don't do anything out of the ordinary, I could just slide by and eventually people will fall out of my world and I can just be me on my own. Can I just speak over your life that God has intended a great outpouring of his goodness on your life to enable you for the life that he's called you to. If you're alive and breathing today, he's not finished with you yet. I believe he has a plan and a purpose over your life. I believe he has goodness to bring to your hand, to fill your heart with. I believe he's got people in your world that are meant to add to your world, not take away from it. I believe there's places, there's people, there's surroundings, there's conversations, there's opportunities, there's offices, there's there's just things that you have never imagined, relationships, there's family moments, there's things that you're counting yourself out of. Either you feel like you don't deserve it or there's just no way life could turn good it's been bad for so long well let me just speak over to your life over your life in faith today that God has not finished with you yet that he has more for you that he wants to whisper the truth and the promises of scripture into your life and fill your heart with a hope that is everlasting and steadfast could you take time today to silence those things that you've allowed to fill in as a noise, to distract you from the fears and the worries that you've got? And could you allow in the silence, a silent prayer for you to just say, God, I need you. I can't do it anymore. It's too hard. Would you be my confidant? This thing at work is eating me away. This sin in my life from 16 years ago is ruining my days. This hope that seems so far away from me, I'm losing grasp of it and I'm struggling to hold on. Could we be honest before God and allow by His Spirit for Him to bring strength for us to try again, strength for us to put our faith in Him again. And I really believe that God comes through every time. He can't not, because if you're breathing, He's not finished with you yet. And He promises that He won't let us go through anything that is beyond us. He always gives us a route through. And if we'd only listen to his spirit, I believe that today confidence and hope in him will see us through this season and set us up for the seasons that are ahead. Can I pray for you for a second? Let's do this together. Father, I thank you that you know us so intimately. And for every heart out there that's aching and feeling lonely, feeling lost, feeling the pressure, feeling fear, feeling anxiety over what could be, even though there's no signs of it yet. God, I pray that as we would put our trust in you, God, that peace would rise, that confidence would come, but that our hope would be assured. God, help us to transfer hope from things or stuff or money or time or opportunity or whatever it is, people, our looks, whatever, God, I pray that we would transfer that hope onto you and that by your spirit, Lord God, you would lead us in this season. God, I pray you'd help us to not Again, put it down tomorrow and pick up the old thing. I pray, God, help us to be faithful, Lord God, to you in this next season. I thank you, God, for the good things that you're able to do in our lives when we surrender to you. So I pray for every person here who's just felt some conviction and some nudging from the Holy Spirit. God, I, help, I pray that over this next week, uh, you'd be bring people around their world, you'd bring scripture to life as they read it, and they would start to get strong on the inside even to a point of bringing others along the journey too. God, we thank you for Easter and we thank you that this was all accomplished through the cross. And Father, I pray that as we gather to celebrate what you did on the cross, what you set us free from and the life that we can have now, God, I thank you that many will be impacted and that our lives will be transformed and we'll live through that transformation every day. In Jesus' name, amen.
why don't you join us for the Easter service coming up. Uh, details are available on this service and down below in the comments. We cannot wait to see you and to celebrate Jesus and the incredible salvation that we find in him. And if you don't know him for yourself and you want to explore a bit more, Easter Sunday is the perfect time for you to come. We're going to be continuing this topic of in Christ and we'd love the opportunity to pray with you or help you out with some resources. So stick around and come and join us in PJ for our 11 a.m. Easter service. God bless you and we'll see you real soon. If you enjoyed this message, check out more on our Hope City KL YouTube and podcast channels. For those who want to know more about Jesus, find a Christian community to be a part of, or who are exploring faith, why not join us this coming Sunday for our 11 a.m. service? We are a growing, vibrant church in the heart of Pataling Jaya in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. With an interactive kids program for 2 to 12s, facilities for parents with under twos and freshly brewed coffee available for 30 minutes before each service, we're confident you'll leave encouraged. Find out more on our website hopecity.my or follow us on Instagram and Facebook now. We can't wait to host you.